Hi and welcome, it's Jessica Drummond here from the Integrative Women's Health Institute, and I am thrilled to have Dr. Nalini Chilkoff with me here. Nalini practices in Santa Monica, California still, and she is really one of the earliest pioneers in integrative cancer care. In fact, you know, if anyone in my family or myself was diagnosed with cancer, like the first person I would call <laughs> would be Dr. Chilkov. So, you know, and not only is her clinical expertise very strong, but she has lectured all over the world. In fact, we lectured once together several years ago. I think it was in London or something. Yeah, in London. Yeah. All of us are really going to be impacted by cancer in some way, whether it's through our practice and patients, through our friends or family members, even ourselves. So this is super valuable information for all of us. So I have invited uh, Dr. Chilkov here to teach us today, and she's going to go deep into the nutrition aspects of supporting cancer care, and I'm going to let you take it away. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. So I look at the cancer journey as uh, different stages. And so uh, when you're just diagnosed, that's the first trauma. That's when you have the first shock. It's very stressful. It's very overwhelming. And there are, are core needs and core questions at each point in the journey. Uh, during treatment is when a lot of patients seek care because they're starting to have adverse effects and they're starting to feel stressed and they're not quite sure how to adapt, so they come to us at that time. Some people wait till they're done with treatment because they have oncologists who are anti-nutritional -nutri interventions, and so we hope that that's not most of our patients, but after treatment, we also have an incredible opportunity to really help them uh, take that moment when they're highly engaged to really change habits and change lifestyle and, and really um, learn something new. They're incredibly open. And then there's a really uh, large uh, group of patients who have successful treatment and they go on and they wanna not have a recurrence. And then there's an, a large group of patients because we're good at treating cancer today that might live with cancer as a chronic illness. They might not be completely in rem remission, but they'll live a long time. So for example, breast cancer patients and colorectal cancer patients fall into that category. Mm -hmm. So um, they, these are people that we'll be dealing with. And we have the opportunity by teaching a health model to transform their outcomes, change their trajectory of their disease and their prognosis. We can also support them in getting through their treatments and helping to manage the short-term and long-term adverse effects. And sometimes we're the only ones that's really dealing with the long-term adverse effects. But our biggest piece is to give a health model that doesn't exist in oncology. There's not even the word health in the lexicon in an oncology clinic, typically. Mm. So I look at the oncologist as the disease expert, the person who's fascinated by the tumor, but we wanna be fascinated by the long-term health of our patients and put that health model in from the beginning right away. So we, what I say to oncologists is, you're the disease expert, let me be the health expert. And then that kind of mitigates resistance in, in the conversation with an oncologist. And so we talk about the tumor microenvironment. This is like the landscape, the cancer terrain. And it is this environment, like the soil in a garden, that transforms what grows there. So with diet and with lifestyle interventions and with phytonutrients, we can transform the signaling that's going on and either uh, turn off growth signals or turn on suppressor signals and really change what's going on. And so diet's a, lo a lot about that. Now I fully expect all of my patients to be outliers. And so uh, I tell people the minute you walk in my office and start asking these questions, you're outside the bell curve. Your opportunity to have a different outcome, to have a better outcome, to have better effects of the treatment and to have less risk of recurrence is automatically in place the minute that you start looking at these things. And so I think one of our jobs is to reduce the anxiety of our patients and mm -hmm. to give them a sense of agency because oncology is an incredibly disenfranchising specialty and the patient feels like they're at the effect of the oncology decisions. And I tell patients, 
when you have a complex illness, you need a team, you need the disease expert, you need the health expert, and you are the head of the team. And so that reframes kind of the, the feeling like all of a sudden somebody took over their life. Mm -hmm. Now, my, my framework is, number one, this metaphor of the soil. If we change the soil, we change the tumor microenvironment, we change the terrain, we change what the behavior of tumor cells is. And then there are a number of factors in that terrain that we need to tend to in order to accomplish that goal. And so in my course, we go through all these aspects of the physiology that we can impact so that we can really change what's happening and also enhance the treatments. For example, in breast cancer, uh, any estrogen-driven cancer, sometimes the only treatment might be hormonal treatment on the part of the oncologist, but mm -hmm. there's still this whole environment. There's not only estrogen involved, there's inflammation involved, there's blood sugar, there's insulin, there's detox, all of these things uh, that we can impact so that they do better. And so I'm going to show you some ways to do that. Now, this is a beautiful uh, slide from one of my colleagues, Victoria Wood, who's a nutritionist that works with cancer patients exclusively. And this is a, um, a really uh, a good way to talk to patients about why it's important to tend to their nutrition, because we can really change the trajectory, but also their quality of life and their stress and what happens to them during and after treatment. So sometimes I have my nutritionist kind of go over all of this so that the patient understands the value of tending to their nutrition. Now, what is uh, true is that uh, diet impacts over 35% of cancer development and progression. And here is a slide that shows you all the different types of cancer that we have studies that we know that food and diet impact that. So it's not just the gastrointestinal cancers. It can be uh, all types of cancers that are impacted by diet. And of course, I think in our functional medicine community, we would say 100% of cancers are actually influenced by diet. Let me just jump in and ask you a quick question. Are you seeing a shift at all in the medical community? Because I, you know, I still see patients saying, you know, and they often have even bowel cancers that are like, oh, you know, my doctor said what I wouldn't matter. Are you starting to see some change there? Well, here's the thing. I practice in California. So yeah. I practice where the medical community is open, collaborative, and early adopters of new ideas, and where maybe 80% of their patients are doing something with integrative cancer care along with seeing their oncologist. So mm. culture of medicine where I practice is, uh, I think, unusual and somewhat extraordinary in that way. There are still lots of oncologists that say, oh, it doesn't matter what you eat. But what they are actually thinking is that diet can't cure cancer, right? Mm, That's mm -hmm. what they're thinking. And we're not making a claim that says diet or herbs or nutrients cure cancer. We're saying that if we tend to healthy function, your patients will do better. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what a lot of doctors think, that we're claiming that we can treat cancer with diet. And so we need to reframe that for the physician so that they understand we're not making some outrageous claim like that, but we're actually going to help them care for their patient to get a better outcome. And if you, if you just say to the doctor, well, at least we can impact quality of life, then that's a terminology in cancer care that, that they can grab onto and go, okay, you know, uh, but they still have candy in the infusion room. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, and I know. think that's a very important distinction because as we learn to communicate with other members of the team in yes. the way that yes. they're thinking, you know, you know, if they're kind of thinking, hey, my whole job is to like get rid of this tumor and diet is just not going to do that. And it just shuts it off. But we have a new way of, of approaching that conversation. That's it right. really opens the opportunity to build that's that right. team. That's yeah. right. So I've developed language uh, that I, uh, in, I like to model when I teach uh, how to talk to the patient and how to talk to their family and how to talk to the oncologist so that there is collaboration and mutual respect and everybody gets a voice at the table. Mm -hmm. you know? So um, that's one of the, the things I say is let me take care of the patient's health. You're really focused on their disease. I think they'll do better. And so 
uh, that's how I approach that. Now, right. if we think about diet as really being an epigenetic intervention, and epigenetics means that we are acting on gene expression. We're not changing DNA, we're not changing genes themselves, but we're changing whether the switch is off or on.